Today we will again be doing a dilution series, but it's a percentage dilution series. Sometimes we want to make a dilution series of a stock solution. What might that be? It might not be something that is chemical based, it might be a plant extract. So in this instance, we're using beetroot extract. We've taken a beetroot and we've used ethanol to extract the pigment from it. And we've been left with a concentrated stock solution. So let's go ahead and see how this is done. We'll make six dilutions. We always need at least five because if we're going to plot anything on a graph, we need at least five data points. And I'm going to make 10 mils of each dilution. Remember, it is one of the CPACs, one of the common practical assessed criteria that you actually produce your table in advance of doing the actual experiment. And so, as you can see here, I've got my volume of uh, beetroot extract, of which I'm starting with 100%, my volume of water in centimetres cubed, and at the bottom I've got absorbance. That's because later on I'll be using my dilutions in a colorimeter. So, if I'm making 10 mils of each, then to make a 20% solution, I need to add two mils of my beetroot extract and I need to top it up with eight mils of water. Equally, to make a 40% solution, I'm going to use four mils of my beetroot extract and six mils of water and so on. If I was making 20 mils of each dilution, I would just double those quantities. So instead of two mils to make 20%, I'd use four mils of the extract and 16 mils of water. The same technique is used here as we've seen before. We use one syringe and we fill all of our test tubes with water first before switching to the other syringe and filling them with the beetroot extract. All test tubes are clearly labelled. Uh, it's just worth a mention that not all test tubes are standard. The capacity that they hold, the cavity in them, sometimes differs from manufacturer to manufacturer. So one of the things I notice that happens to students is that they do their measuring perfectly, but when they align their test tubes, liquids are at different heights. And the first thing they think is that they've actually measured it wrong, but in actual fact, they haven't.